across the board here with Ian the Colonel on hawkradio.org and across the board radio. Dot com. We always try to have the best bands in the entire world. A lot of these bands have been around for years and are still doing it as well as ever, if not better than ever. I think better than ever. Yeah, and yeah. this is definitely one of those bands. Uh, we are honored to have with us right now Tommy Victor of Prong. Tommy, welcome to the show. It's great to be across the board with you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, man. And, uh, you know, gosh, Prong, you've been around for so long, and I... When I say you, I really mean you, uh, you know, the only really original member of the band uh, to stick with it. But uh, And a lot of bands are like that these days. You know, we've had Mark uh, Hunter on from Chimera, that the band sticks around, but it's really just kind of revolving around one guy. Heart and soul. Yeah. Um, but the sound is the same. I mean, it, it, you, like I said, you keep putting out the same quality music, and it keeps getting better. How do you do that with so many lineup changes? Well, a lot of it comes to me. I mean, I, a lot of falls on my back as being a writer, you know, singer, guitar player. Right. So I got to stick in the studio and stay there for hours on end. So, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of it falls on those guys normally. I mean, I don't know how many bass players write all the material. So, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, you know, I mean, but I, I work with other guys, too. I mean, like Tony Campos worked on this record, mm-hmm, and he had some mm-hmm. ideas, and then, I have outside guys coming in. It's always been like that. But uh, essentially, as a main lyricist and writer, you know, that's just the way it happened. I, mean, I didn't design it that way. I just fell into it. And you've worked with so many of the, uh, you know, being one of the music industry greats as well, but you've worked with so many other greats as well, including, uh, you know, you've obviously been with Glenn Danzig, and you've worked with Rob Zombie, and you've worked with Trent Reznor. Yeah, I heard of them. <laughs> what, yeah, guys that are... Al <laughs> Torgensen. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what do, you, what do you attribute for all the greatness you've surrounded yourself with as well that just really builds on your sound? You've been able to capitalize on those connections. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know if I capitalized on it because a lot of those guys still owe me money. So <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, I mean, my phone rings. I mean, I, don't, I really don't know why it, it just happens. Uh, you know, every time I think I'm going to have to like deliver pizzas or something, the phone rings. So it's sort of been like that for 25 years. I'm like, what am I, I'm at that stage now all the time. You know, I mean, and everyone these days uh, with the economy are always wondering, oh, maybe we should change careers or what are we going to do? So I'm just in the same boat with everybody else. Phone rings, I go and do what I can and, and wait for the checks, which never come. So <laughs> it's the same thing. Tough industry these days. And we are talking about the new album, Carved Into Stone, which just dropped a couple of months ago. Uh, you know, great stuff, as always. But talk about how the digital change has affected you as a musician since you've been around for a while. I mean, a lot of the newer bands are like, you know, that's all they know. That's all they know is um, out putting on their website. Right, and, that kind yeah. of thing. But you've seen it from, you know, from back in the day. How has that affected you? And, and, and a lot of people are talking these days, like you said, you know, talking about delivering pizzas, which you're joking, but it, it really can affect your, yeah. you know, your economics for sure. So how has that affected you, good and bad, I guess? Oh, it affects you mentally. I've become more of a major alcoholic these days <laughs> than before. But anyhow, mm. it's a, you know, when we started out, there was a place called Bleaker Bob's on the Lower East Side, actually in the village in Manhattan, yeah. and we did our own record called Primitive Origins, and I sold 3,000 of those EPs just out of that one store. Wow. It's on an indie level, you know, and it is, it's, uh, I'd run to the mailbox and throw in, you know, I was selling stuff out of my apartment on Stanton Street in the Bowery. I mean, mm. it, was, it was just so much more hands-on. I mean, I guess for the kids today, it's the same thing with, on the internet, but you know, with with uh, video games and other entertainment uh, um, things out there for people to spend money on, I mean, it's just dwindled. So, uh, you know, we appreciate anybody that still goes out and speaks out CDs and, uh, you know, tries to find them. I mean, uh, you know, we went on the Best Buy. Me and Glenn Danzig went out to a bunch of the Best Buys, and we're just like, what are we going to do? It's like, it's so dwindling. I mean, I mean, what used to be, you know, a huge section is now, you know, mm-hmm. you know, a couple of Justin Bieber records <laughs> and, uh, you know, Madonna, and that's about it, you know. What, yeah. what do you think is the fix for that? I mean, a lot of, there are a lot of great bands that just literally can't afford to go out and tour anymore or to record an album. A lot of them are, you know, asking their fans for help to fund an album. What is right, the fix the for that? thing and all that. I think yeah. that's the way to go, really. I think you just have to get rid of the labels. I mean, I signed a record deal with, with SPV, and they've been really cool. But uh, I don't know if you need them anymore, really. You just uh, mm-hmm. you know, get this pledge thing going. You know, you do a, a big marketing campaign online, or you know, you just drive around and you know try to see people buy buy uh, 
your record in stores again like it used to be. Uh, but uh, you know, even the mom and pops are you know they're, they're you know suffering. You know, those smaller stores. So I don't have any answers. If I did, I you know I would you know donate that information to everyone else. Everyone's trying to scratching their heads trying to figure the whole thing out. Yeah. But years ago, I mean, when CDs came out. I saw it was towards the it was getting towards the end because I knew that people were going to be able to rip those and uh, you know the cost of them were high so right. I mean I've seen this coming for a long time I don't know why I, you know, I didn't uh, you know uh, get out when I could <laughs> I'm just kidding <laughs> but I, I enjoy playing and I like making records so you know that you know and touring and playing and you know performing is is still uh, you know it's still a challenge you know like you guys were saying you know you got to beat your last record. I mean, that's always something you want to do. And, uh, you know, I think that applies to, you know, a lot of guys, you know, like the Glens out there who just keep putting out records and, you know, and have a, having a good time doing it. And so, I, I mean, it's a lot, you know, it's not all about the money. I mean, it's not, you know, I sound like I'm, you know, like an attorney here or something, but it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's about, uh, you know, doing what you could do and, hope, you know, turning people on to your thoughts and, uh, feelings about things and, uh, you know, trying to do something innovative on the guitar, too, you know, not just falling into, you know, what everyone else is doing. And I think that's what, like, you were going back to an earlier question about how, you know, my why my phone rings. It's like, you know, I don't pay attention to what, you know, what other guitar players are doing and other lyricists that much. I just do my own thing. And, uh, you know, that, that that's what keeps me fresh and, you know, keeps me original. Yeah, and, and you bring up a valid point, you know, and I know we, a lot of people say it's it's not about the money, and I absolutely, I absolutely believe every single one of them, but what the thing the fans don't understand is you may not be doing it for the money, but you still need it to survive in the industry just to be able to tour, like E said, to be able to eat in a day, you know, a lot of these yeah. bands are struggling to do that while yeah, they're on the, the road. Tour bus, right. yeah. it, it's still it's a it's a it's a necessary expense that has to come along with the process, and I, I really wish more fans would uh, would take that to heart a little bit, you know, and, and buy albums in the first week and go see the 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 the, the artists when they perform at their shows and buy merch. Those are the ways that you guys make the money, not from uh, you know mostly from album sales. It's yeah, now see. it's it's definitely with the merch, and we're trying to get some. Exciting other items, you know, like well, vinyl was coming back. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you just have to keep thinking about things uh, along those lines. Uh, and uh, you know, gas prices definitely hurt everybody, and that's that's, just, that's a big issue. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. But uh, I mean, you can make it work. I mean, it's, it's definitely uh, you know a struggle, but uh, you know, you can do it. Now, Tommy, uh, the new album again. Uh, you know, we're talking about is carved into stone. Go check it out right now. It's out and get it. You know, like he said, get it on vinyl if you can, man. How sweet is that? Go out and pick it on turntable. I've, I've got, been collecting vinyls again. Yeah, it has better sound than digital. It really does. Neil Young's not cr- well. Neil Young is crazy, but he's right. It does sound better. You know, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, Tommy, I, I read that this is one of the first albums, if not the first prong album that you've taken direction from a producer in the studio. Talk about that difference, you know, taking someone else's input and merging that into your music. Well, you can't micromanage everything. I mean, like I said, I got, you know, I have so much work to do writing and, you know, trying to get my guitar chops up, you know, uh, even though we, you know, we spent the whole budget on Steve Evitz, uh, it was just the, the best thing to do to make a really good sounding record. This is a guy that's done, you know, over a hundred records. He's engineered like all of Ross Robinson stuff. And, uh, you know, he's produced like amazing records, you know, like, uh, like all, all the Dillinger records and, uh, you know, Sepultura and, uh, you know, he actually worked on a Cure record, mm. so he's really broad based. He did like Census Fail and like mm-hmm. just a wide range of stuff. And Alice Santa, and like I listened to the vo- the way he treated the vocals, and I'm like, this is what I want to go for. Because I mean, let's face it, a lot of the you know older prong records, the vocals were sort of like, okay, you know, we're sort of getting by, and I wanted to, I wanted to get better on that, and I was like, I needed help from somebody, and then. You know, a guy that was modern and, you know, without the the, the use of Pro Tools with mm-hmm. everything, which means, you know, auto-tune and everything. We did none of that. I mean, there's very little done in the box, so to speak, with Pro Tools. It was just all done old school, but getting the right performances and, uh, you know, keeping me on tune and, you know, just, uh, you know, using a whole bunch of good vintage amps, et cetera. Just, just, that's where I wanted to go. And, you know, to do it yourself. I mean, I made so many computer records, like with, with Ministry and, you know, uh, you know the things I've done in the past, and even the last couple of Pong records. You know, we did a lot where you know you cut and paste a couple of things, and then oh, let's get it over with. Especially if I, you know, produce it, I want to get the hell out of the studio and go to a bar as fast as quick as possible. <laughs> this guy didn't let me do that. I was like, I was there just, 
you know, you know, just busting my balls all day long, and uh, you know, it was it was grueling. But uh, you know, it was, I wish we did this record, you know, like 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. It would have been the smartest thing to do, just get a really good guy that you know that, that you could take direction from, that knows what he's doing, that works. You know, is really hard working, and this guy's amazing. So, you know, I I, I recommend Steve Evans to anybody. He's just a really amazing producer, and uh, you know, I needed that. I needed somebody to kick me in the in the butt a little bit. <laughs> and the result is incredible, by the way. Now, Thanks. you're you're one of the greatest guitar. I mean, you know, let's not. Let's not mince words here. I mean, you really are one of the best uh, metal guitarists of all time. What do you look for? I mean, you've played with, you know, like we said, Ministry. You've worked with, um, you Danzig. know, Danzig. All of these incredible bands. The list goes on and on. What do you look for when you're buying a guitar? I mean, I think you're a Schecter man right now, if I if I uh, read this correctly. But a lot of metal bands are using Schecter, and you know, some are still using Gibsons and stuff. But what do you look for in a guitar and in your rig setup? It's a playability, obviously, is, is the number one thing, and it's like the profile of the neck. And, and uh, right now, I'm actually working designing a guitar for me, a signature model, and uh, nice. it, it's it's a combination of the pickups. I mean, I've tried so many things, a lot of trial and error over the years. Like I didn't really know what I was doing, like when I started. I, you know, I was actually a bass player uh, when prong started, and I just picked it up along the way. I mean, it, it's just the uh, just continual effort to. To, to find you know your own comfort zone, like some you know it depends what you're doing. I mean you know I, I don't think I'm not really that great of a guitar player. I just uh, well you're you know, wrong I, I, again. Like I, I don't I, I don't try to carve and copy what everybody else is doing. I look for other stuff like you know like on the new album. Uh, you know we were listening to at that time. I mean it does the, the material doesn't sound like it, but uh, you know I went back to like you know what, what Tom Schultz was doing like with Boston and. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, like, you know, older 70s stuff I uh, started re-looking at and, you know, seeing, like, you know, where the solos were, were reflective of the songs more than just a whole bunch of, like, riffage, you know, and, uh, right. you know, I mean, I like to do catchy riffs, so, you know, you know, the, as far as the gear again, whatever's comfortable for anybody else, you know, like, you know, in, in, I've always, I've always used transistor equipment because, you mean, uh, I was really good friends with Dimebag and, you know, he, yeah. he turned me on to a lot of stuff, you know, touring with Pantera many times and, yeah, you, know, you just pick up stuff as you go along, and um, you know I'm still growing in that. I'm still trying to figure it out. Just whatever's comfortable for you, and you know now we're going really retro, like you know the whole style, like that old Charvel vibe on a guitar is something that you know I think is really attractive to people because it's really classic, you know. And uh, rather than you know the, the uh, you know a straight vintage thing is fine for like alternative bands or whatever. It's whatever you want, you know, without spending a whole bunch of money. So. Like that's that's the key. Yeah, affordability definitely has a lot to do with buying. Yeah, I mean, I really the sectors are great, and they're getting better and better. I mean, the quality of the wood has gone up, and you know, it's uh, you know either maple or mahogany neck, or either one of them. I mean, I'd rather go to mahogany because it's a little little darker. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that we like to ask about, you know, a lot of our seasoned veterans who come on this show is we always look for input from you guys. What's a band? that you know of right now that probably not too many people are aware of that you can give everyone a heads up on a band you think's got a promising future. Well, I was talking about like Ghost maybe like a year ago. Now everyone knows who they oh, are. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm a little bit behind the signs. Like, you know, it's like, you know, even like when, you know, when Mastodon, I heard, you know, that that was, they really were amazing. Like when, you know, I think when they came out, uh, you know, we play with those shows with this band Black Tusk. I really like them mm -hmm. a lot. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Toxic Holocaust. I like the bands, you know, with some of these younger bands that are, you know, that, that are reflective of, uh, you know, older school stuff. And, um, you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's somebody right on the on the edge. I, I don't know. I mean, I the, like Black Tusk is like my favorite, like, newer band, okay. I would say. Now, you're on tour uh, all over the country right now. I, I think you're hitting every, you know, state, the D.C., everything. Uh, and, you're yeah. you know, you're out there with Clutch, with Corrosion of Conformity. It just, how can you miss this show? I, I mean, yeah, it, you can't. There's no excuses. Yeah, absolutely well, incredible. Well, we're going to be, I mean, we didn't announce who we're going out after that, but we had, we're, we're out till September. So, uh, you know, anybody can check. You know, in, in the next week, we're announcing the, the, the whole month of shows in, uh, in August. And uh, that's going to be a big tour. And then there's another one after that. So, you know, in, on prongmusic.com, www.prongmusic.com, keep checking that. And then, uh, you know, anybody can hit me up on Twitter, which is uh, Prong Music. So, uh, you know, I'm always looking at that these days. So, uh, yeah, I mean, those next dates will be com coming up. And, 
Yeah, I mean, we've been out. We did we did a, a good tour with Crowbar, and then we went to Europe, and then I, you know, I just got back from the Danzig Legacy mm-hmm. two week run, and now I'm going back to Prong again next week. And you know, you you know how to pick some good festivals to play in too, because you guys are playing Not Fest in August and Bumber. Oh yeah, Not Fest. Yeah, that's one. Not I looked at when I saw the Not Fest lineup. I really almost soiled myself. That is a <laughs> fantastic lineup. Yeah, I, I've never seen, honestly, ever seen a lineup that good before. Mm-hmm. That's that's really good, and have you guys a part of that really means a lot, to, you know, and to the fans as well because you definitely belong to be in there. Uh, when you look, when you get invited to do festivals, what what are you looking for? Are you looking for? Uh, you know the number of what you're looking at, like ticket sales for volume. Are you looking at venue, or are you looking for just something different? Well, we're just we're just happy to get invited to something like that. I mean, like we'll do a festival that has like all golf bands. I mean, we'll do a festival that that is more hardcore oriented. I mean, anything at this point, you know. Like, I mean, especially years ago, I mean, Prong would would do a lot of like alternative type of things as well. So mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't really, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, when you get called, you just do it and, you know, take it for what it's worth. I mean, whether people give you the finger or, you know, throw things at you or, uh, you know, like it. I mean, it's just, you know, tomorrow's another day. You know, it's like we've had, you know, some, some crazy, horrible experiences doing them uh, in Europe where, you know, play like a, and back way back, we did uh, the first rock hard festival, and we were just hated. Which was it was mainly death metal bands, and then you know, uh, then you do something really cool that you, it's unexpected, like you know, like I said, like a, a festival that's primarily like golf stuff or whatever. I mean, you know, this one's great. I mean, I mean, we're just honored to do it. I can't believe we got you know asked to do it. You know, for both dates too. It's you really belong fantastic. to be there. What are some of those the the down times? I mean, the great times, obviously. You know, people are, are cheering you guys on and, and buying merch and buying CDs. But you mentioned some of the nightmares in Europe, uh, you know, where people didn't appreciate the show. You know, what were they doing there? Throwing stuff or just you know? Yeah, yeah, whatever. You know, just uh, they turn their back on you, or whatever. Really? You know, it's like, uh, you know, you get attitudes for some some other bands are annoyed that you're going on after them. I mean, it's it's there's always whatever you can imagine. You know, it's like prima donna stuff. Uh, you know, it's it's always so. You know, a lot of kids don't know who you are, and you know they're scratching their heads or what have you. You know, a lot of times you go on rented gear or whatever. It's one uh, and done, and it's like you're playing out of an amp that sounds like, you know, like a pig nose or something. So, <laughs> right. it's all kinds of anything. Anything is possible in this uh, realm. Oh, anything man. crazy could always happen. Uh, Tommy, if you again, we're talking about the new album, Carved into stone it is out right now go out and get it please and go see these guys live we're always talking about this go see musicians buy their merch buy their albums and uh you know that's that's the important way to support a band you can't just experience that music yeah yeah yeah, you can't just steal music these days you shouldn't steal music anyway but i mean you know people go on these sites like kazaa and all this nonsense and steal music and then they're like oh my you know we probably just can't afford their eighth car or something like that. But it's not like that, Tommy. Am I right? I mean, you guys really survive off album sales and merch and ticket sales, right? Yeah, I mean, we're barely surviving at that right now. I mean, hopefully we get up a little bit. You just get by, and that's, you know, really what it's about. So, yeah, I mean, you know, merch helps. And then, uh, you know, I mean, you can, there's digital ways of buying stuff, too, which, you know, you receive, you know, eventually, right. you know, in you know the next uh, lifetime or something, your royalties <laughs> from those. But, you know, whatever, you know, I mean. Uh, a lot of it comes from that, so you know that's, there's nothing you can fight against those, you know, you know, buying it on iTunes or whatever. Yeah, you know, we got a record out now on Sony that they re-released all the old prong stuff. It's called the Very Best of Prong, so you can check that out too on on iTunes, and it's pretty crazy. It's got all the old stuff and remastered, you know, all the epic records, uh, you know, that were out too. So we got two stuff going, two records out at the same time, pretty much. So. But Carbon Stones, I think it's my my favorite Prong album. It came out great, so everyone's got to check it out. Yeah, go Absolutely. get it for sure. Now, Tommy, if you knew you had ten to fifteen minutes left uh, before your life is wrapping up here, what is the last song that you would want to hear or perform, yours or anybody else's? But the last song that goes through your head? Probably the uh, the song on the Carbon Stone Path of Least Resistance on there. That I mean, it's sort of a. Uh, maybe like a gloomy afterlife type of vibe on there, so that would maybe project into the future a little bit. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Um, you know, in terms of when you're 
you're looking at the future of prong and uh, you know all all financial assessments aside what do you think is in the future after you know looking at 2013 2014 and beyond what, what do you see you guys doing um, for the next couple of years well, I think one of the things uh, we've already done this in Europe was doing like the complete beg to differ album mm-hmm. uh, I know it sounds like a really average answer but no you know, that's like, a great answer doing like a whole cleansing record from start to finish I mean I mean we've become into that legacy part of our careers or my career that you know you you have to go out and do those things and there's nothing wrong with it I think it's cool I mean the old fans want to love to hear like an album from start to finish and then you know mm-hmm. a couple of added things i mean the whole big to differ thing we just did in europe went over great i mean it was like uh and it was fun because i you know i hadn't played a lot of those songs for years and you go back and do them and you know you realize uh you know where you were at at that time and you know, you're singing these lyrics and uh it's kind of enjoyable yeah i don't think that's an average answer at all Not first at all. off we don't care if it's an average answer. We want the honest answer, so we appreciate that. And I think it's it's different. It really is different. And we want to see you perform songs, like you said, you find that headspace that you were in at the time, and then live that for an hour and a half or, or however long the show might be. Yeah, and even then, you know, the the artists that get to perform the full albums like that 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 is built on their legacy that they sure. left and what their history yeah, has yeah, been. Yeah, totally. So I mean, it's rejuvenating at the same time and. Yeah, you, know, you, you get a sense of gratitude towards things about that right. as well as as much as a nightmare as everything is. I, you know, at least at least you could, you know, uh, it's not like you made a record and then it's forgotten forever. At least it's uh, you know it continues in some way. Absolutely. Well, folks, again, uh, Prong is alive and well. The new album is out right now, Carved Into Stone. It's out on iTunes and all of those places. And, of course, if you see them live, you can buy their album there as well. And uh, say hello to the guys for sure and enjoy that show. Uh, And prongmusic.com, you can find everything related to the band and Tommy right there. Tommy, we appreciate it, man. And we'll be back here in a few minutes on Across the Board with Ian the Colonel here on hawkradio.org. And acrossthebordradio.com. Thank you, guys.